So I had a realization that I have not been using Figma a whole lot recently. And there's a couple reasons for that. But one of the more interesting reasons is that I have been spending a lot more time building designs uh, in prototypes rather than actually making them in Figma. In the last couple of weeks, I've seen a lot of discourse around designers who ship and getting into the actual code and building the thing instead of just designing something in Figma. And I wanted to tell, take a bit of time and kind of go through my approach to doing that, at least right now. Um, I'm very excited for how this can evolve in the future, uh, but just kind of wanted to kind of share a little bit about where I'm at right now. So a lot of this work takes place in the context of my day job, which is at a company called Census. This is our website right here. Um, Census started out as essentially the original reverse ETL platform. Uh, basically what we do is we build a tool that lets you, that lets companies define data or take data that's been defined in a data warehouse or SQL using uh, DBT or anything like that and send that data uh, to specific apps, Salesforce, Braze, Marketo, HubSpot, whatever it might be. And the real big, I think the, the biggest thesis behind this is that our platform centralizes all of this logic for how this data is delivered and sent to different teams. So they're all using the same team. Companies have lots and lots of data. And so it's important for them to know and see exactly kind of essentially the same thing wherever they might be working. So our platform, not just we, we don't just pride ourselves on being a platform where you can connect these things, but also where these things can be defined and where these things can be kind of uh, universally applied across a company. And this is where our kind of current moniker of universal data platform comes from. This is a bit of a new moniker. We've tried a couple different other things over the last couple of years. This is kind of our latest pivot. And this pivot is important because what it means is that we are attempting to work on, you know, kind of democratizing access to this data um, across an entire company and making it easy for most people to be able to define and access this data for whatever tool Tool they need to use so that teams that are working on you know sales cycles and marketing teams and operations teams can all essentially be working with the same information the same data now what this also means is because we have been pivoting and kind of um, trying new things very regularly it also means that we are shipping and, and attempting to ship faster and faster so that we can learn from what we ship uh, more readily. And what this also means is that a traditional product design process I don't think works very well anymore. Um, spending three or four weeks designing the perfect um, experience just doesn't seem to be realistic in our current world where our focus is more on how do we get something into the hands of a user, into the hands of a customer, so that they can evaluate it and give us feedback. Now, a couple recent examples of this is things that we've been working on, particularly with um, our column definition uh, functionality. So this is our product. This is a data set where you can define this data for maybe users. You can see we have 152,000 rows in this data set. And in this, we have um, new functionality for defining, um, creating a column that's generated by ChatGPT um, or OpenAI. And inside it, and eventually like support for Claude and all the different um, major LLMs, right now we're using uh, ChatGPT. Now, this experience right here is actually something relatively new. We actually just launched this in the last couple days um, before we had this other kind of whole um, experience with a lot of little things down the left-hand sidebar. Now, when I worked with our engineers uh, kind of on this, we actually spent very, very little time in Figma. We did some things in Figma to kind of get an idea of how we wanted to structure some information, and it was really helpful for that. But most of the time that we spent was actually looking at the code and kind of finessing things together, um, looking at the components that we're using here, our design system library, and actually kind of like evaluating these things live instead of spending time in Figma to create the perfect thing. What this also means is that I spend a lot more time thinking about component level design choices and how those things might apply across a larger spectrum of, of kind of application and patterns rather than specific screens and workflows. So the thing that I have been thinking about here is, is wanting to maintain um, a, a kind of ability to do 
what I feel is appropriate product and user experience design without necessarily slowing them down. And I am not necessarily a big fan of kind of a just in time design process. I would like to kind of get us to a point where we can be a little bit more attention intentional ahead of time with evaluating different approaches and different ideas before we kind of start the solutioning formal solutioning process with our engineering team. So one of the things I've been working on is um, going instead of you know working inside of Figma, um, actually building out a prototype. And so this code prototype is built in uh, React. We're using Remix, um, the kind of React framework maintained by Shopify. And the important thing to know about this, or the 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 thing that I feel is most important here, is like this prototype is in the browser. It's a lot more real than any Figma prototype. It's a lot more real than any Figma, um, you know, kind of design file that I might make. And this is, um, there's a lot of benefits to using this and doing this as a designer, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, but one of the things I wanted to emphasize here um, and talk about a little bit first is talking about how this thing is built. So this thing is built, um, you, like I say, using React, using Remix, um, but I'm also using IndexedDB. So IndexedDB in here has a bunch of data inside of it, things for connections, uh, you know, data sets, syncs, um, workspace level connections, um, all of these things kind of exist, even things like user configuration. So at some point, this is very this is very light right now, but things like, uh, you know, we could have um, options and things like that kind of in here so that I could configure those things and change those things on the fly. And the good thing about this is that this data can be passed straight from kind of this top level index level through to the uh, kind of uh, components. So I'll pull up this right here, which this is kind of the index tippy top level um, route for the app um, experience itself. And this is really great because I can basically initialize the DB here and then pass that data as data um, const, you know, this loader data, these, this data right here to um, what Remix calls outlets. So this is basically where any sub page is going to populate inside of this. So this makes it really easy for me, and we'll talk about what this means here in a second, but what, this makes it really easy to send this data through and then have consistent data. That's one of the things I always hated so much about doing prototyping in Figma is that to get like the different states and different applications of data in different components and different patterns requires so much manual tedious work. And here I can define it once, and then I can basically just use it wherever I need to access it. Now, um, clicking in and getting started like in the new kind of user, um, experience like this is a potential getting started design that we've um, been considering to show here's what you can do to get started and then here's like you know some use cases to use census for um, I kind of ripped this straight off of equals um, but still kind of interesting way to kind of explore this and this is one of the cool things about doing this is like I can rip this straight off of a uh, inspiration and get it in the browser and we can see how is this going to need to change for us. Connecting a data source, I click this, I'm gonna to go to connections, create a data set, I'm gonna click this, I'm gonna to go to the new data set page. Things like that, all of those things become really real, I think, when you go, okay, I need to click this. Hmm, I can't click it, what do I need to do next? Um, read the docs, this goes to our docs link, our docs page, so it feels very real um, in the browser. Now, the great thing about doing this as well is like I mentioned, I have a lot of access to data. So I can actually build out things like tables, uh, tables that function properly, that they can be sorted. You can select things. I don't have anything configured in here to do once you select it, but potentially, you know, we could sh show actions and things like that um, to delete or rename or add to a folder or whatever it might be. Um, the other thing that I've been really enjoying about doing this is the ability to, like I said, kind of iterate through ideas. So this is a recent idea that we're also considering here, which is like, how do we make this kind of landing page for a data set a little bit more um, engaging, not just for information that you might need to know about a data set, but also information about what to do with the data set. So let's say you've just created this thing and now I need to come here and then it's like, okay, what's next, right? Like what, what's the next thing I need to do? So I've been working, I kind of put together a couple options for some of our team here and can show like, hey, you know, yeah, we could do something like this, which is kind of like a checklist, right? Like, okay, add relationship, create a relationship, uh, dedupe, do deep dupe, enhance, right? Like all of these things could be things that you do, but this also feels a little bit too much like a checklist, right? So I said, okay, that's a little bit too checklist list like maybe we don't want that um, what if we did something like this where it's more of just kind of an informational banner across the top 
And then these feel a little bit more like big kind of actions that you click or something like that, that gives you some more information. Now I haven't created the images. I haven't created all the content that fill, fills in here yet, but already I have a much better idea of how this thing might work and what it might look like doing this than if I was in Figma because it is in the browser. I can interact with it and you know, I can go come up here and hit dismiss. Oh, that looks a little strange. I wonder what we would need to do about that. All of those things become a lot easier to suss out and figure out when it's in the browser, I think, than when you might have to do it um, than, than if it's just in Figma. This is another version of it. Again, similar, it's kind of a much simpler version, but again, you know, dismiss and it goes away. And again, that is the behavior that we'd be looking for. So not only is this better for me to get a sense of how do I make this a good experience, it's more effective for sharing with stakeholders, um, our product team, engineers. Um, it's a little bit easier to understand for people so that they understand, okay, here's where we're going to go through this. And this is also true with workflows. So we're even considering things like workflow um, changes and adjustments here. Um, so I'll come here in our Product, live product right now, um, new data set. So you create a new data set and you have to kind of choose what kind of data set you want. This might not be something everybody's comfortable under doing. Um, and then you kind of come in and you say, okay, now I'm gonna make my data set from a certain source and do all these things. Um, so we actually had the conversation as a team, well, what if you didn't have to do it that way? What if you could just create a data set from and, and start essentially from the source itself? Um, kind of eliminating some friction and, and kind of getting you straight into my, I know where my data is, I know what I need, let me just kind of get in and do it. And so here, you know, I could come in and do Snowflake, uh, you know, use connection. And then I've also built out like, hey, this is actual uh, a SQL query. This is the same library we use in our product. Um, now it doesn't function. It's not going to actually run the SQL and get the data out of Snowflake, but it is going to provide a realistic, more realistic experience than me just throwing a SQL query kind of visual editor in a Figma file and that being um, something that people kind of have to interpret. Um, there's less imagination that has to go into this. I'm, I'm asking our users or stakeholders to do less imagining. There's also things like this, you know, if I'm gonna have connections here, connect new, so where does the connection flow work into this? How does this workflow change because of that? Now, you know, we could definitely make all of our different diagrams and workflow diagrams, but getting it in the browser so we can see it and evaluate it, I think is a little bit more useful because it feels like we're getting um, a little bit more realistic environment to figure this out on the fly rather than trying to imagine what it might be with like low fidelity wireframes or things like that. Again, those are still things I'm doing right now. They're just not playing as big of a role in terms of um, we're spending a little bit of time there and then I'm jumping into here or I'm jumping in with engineers and working with them there. Um, then the last thing that I'll just share real quick is even things like breadcrumbs. So here, you know, we're working on kind of a connections experience. Um, you know, we haven't fully flushed it out yet, but I'm considering like, well, maybe we do a full um, page, right? So you click in, you have this whole kind of uh, page for your connection. Um, that might not be the right way to do it. So now I'm also considering like maybe there's some kind of uh, drawer that slides in, maybe it's a sheet, maybe it's just a, a split experience down the middle. Um, but then again, if I put this on a smaller laptop screen, that might feel weird, that might not work well. So it gives me the ability to kind of understand from various different use cases how the behavior might work without having to involve our engineering team in lots of revisions and doing lots of expensive kind of reworking of things um, from an interaction and user experience perspective. Now the other last real quick the other thing I'll just share real quick is that I'm also using Remix's um, kind of optional route variables up here. So if I pass v2 here, which I'm showing here, if version is V2, I can actually switch the entire layout around and change the header navigation. This is something that I think about a lot as we're pivoting our product and we're pivoting our direction and trying to figure out how we're going to embrace the universal data platform and a lot of the things that we're talking about. How do we make our product feel like it fits the mental model of our users? How do we make it feel like it's going to satisfy their needs without being overwhelming, you know, directionally and things like that? So I was like, well, maybe there's a new navigation that plays into role here. Maybe we do a top navigation bar. Well, how do we evaluate that? Well, let's just go ahead and build it, right? Um, you know, this is a drop down here for our audience hub feature. Um, you know, but again, all of these other things are still pretty much the same. So I come in here and I got the same breadcrumb system. Um, all the only thing that's changed is the representation of our information architecture and what we present to users at the very top level of our app. And again, here, even with like our workspace switcher, um, accessing workspace settings, things like that, all of those little things that maybe don't 
get thought about or are harder to think about during the design process or much easier to evaluate when it's in browser. Anyway, I just wanted to share a little bit about this. I hope this is interesting to you. You might be watching. I'm always interested in hearing feedback, thoughts, ideas, um, if you like it. Thanks so much.